Hi there, I'm Jennifer White, PTUK's Media and Communications Manager. Welcome to our fireside chat with Peter President Ingrid Newkirk. Tonight, we are globetrotting across three continents to bring you an inside look at some of the wonderful work for animals that PETA's Global Compassion Fund, or GCF, makes possible. In a recent interview with BBC News, I highlighted PETA Germany's incredible GCF-backed work in Ukraine, where teams are working together to shepherd animals out of the war-torn country safely but more on that coming up shortly. We would love to hear what you think during this chat. And if you're joining us live, there is a comment box just below this video player, and you can chime in on all of the vital work for animals that we'll be discussing. Ingrid, over to you. Thanks, Jennifer, and thank you for joining us. I know you'll come away from our chat moved and inspired by all the Global Compassion Fund is helping accomplish for animals. The saying goes that the world is like a handkerchief, all the parts woven together. But then again, cultures are miles apart and the treatment of animals varies drastically from one country to another. We seek out the trouble spots for animals, as you'll see. But first, talking of trouble spots for this species too, let's look at what's going on in Ukraine where Peter Germany works with a network of partner organizations and volunteers to rescue, feed and comfort thousands of animals in the war zone and at the borders. Then we'll visit Mexico, where we can throw our sombreros in the air to celebrate bullfighting bands, and where the fund is supporting spayathons that are curbing that country's huge homeless animal crisis. And finally, we'll head to the Middle East, to the ancient site of Petra in Jordan, where we'll meet some of the animals receiving free veterinary care thanks to the GCF-supported work there. So sit back and travel in your armchair while we share some super news with you. We start our journey in Ukraine. Animals don't wage wars, of course, but animals pay a very high price when humans do. Many shelters in Ukraine were hit with bombs, and street animals found their little refuges blown to smithereens and their human feeders gone. By a stroke of good fortune, Peter Germany and its partners were already working in Ukraine to help animals before the war began. These partnerships meant that Peter Germany could immediately assemble a rescue team and set up at the Polish border, even as the border descended into abject chaos with millions of refugees pouring out of Ukraine in search of safety. Some people traveled for days on foot, and yes, some people did leave their animals behind, but many didn't and they had their cherished animal companions in carriers or tucked away inside their coats. However, when they reached the border, they found that a quick exit was impossible. Some people and their animals waited for up to three days in the snow because of red tape and because of the long list of requirements that prevented them from bringing the animals out. War is hell. Indeed it is, and not just for human beings. Of course, you know that we don't sit quietly. At PETA, our entities around the world immediately began raising hell about these delays, pressuring countries like Hungary and Poland and Romania, Mexico, the UK and others to relax their border laws for refugees traveling with animals. And our pressure paid off as these countries soon agreed. And that allowed us to run ads on popular sites in Ukraine, urging anyone thinking of evacuating to make sure not to leave their animals behind. Lots of Indian students study, or should I say studied, in Ukraine. One of those students, Rishab, had rescued a puppy named Malibu and they were among those trapped in the war zone. When his pleas to the Indian embassy went totally unanswered, Rishab turned to social media for help. 
and Peter India immediately got cracking on his behalf. You may remember this wasn't the first time Peter India has taken on bureaucracy at the border. In 2021, there was a cat who had stowed away on a Chinese cargo ship that ended up in Chennai, and he found himself facing deportation back to China. COVID quarantine restrictions prohibited anyone from taking that cat off the ship. It took gobs of pressure on government officials from Peter India and tweets from many of our Bollywood supporters to convince the government to relent and allow the cat to stay in India and be adopted into a loving home. But that is what happened. Thankfully, things went much faster for the little dog, Malibu. Just three days after Rishabh took to social media, Peter India persuaded the government to relax border restrictions for all Indians and all their animals fleeing Ukraine. Malibu became a happy Mumbaika, a resident of Mumbai. But Peter Germany's team had to tackle another critical need. Shelters across Ukraine started running low on food. Some were down to just one or two days worth, and with most shops shuttered or empty, and imports halted, dogs and cats would soon starve. Even horses couldn't find food, as the fields were covered in ice, and no hay was being delivered. So Peter Germany somehow managed to find a transport company run by Ukrainian men who wanted to return to Ukraine and fight for their homeland. The men agreed to deliver 40,000 pounds of dog and cat food, horse feed, and other vital supplies across the border into Ukraine, meaning hundreds of animals could eat. Since then, our team has dispatched a steady stream of trucks and rescue vehicles, all loaded with tons and tons of food for starving animals. And those rescue convoys never returned to the border empty, and let me explain what I mean. We began using the somewhat safer city of Lviv as a distribution hub. The team would drop off the food and supplies there and then head back to Poland with shelter animals who had been waiting in Lviv, having been delivered there in the hope of finding a way out of the country. Thanks to the teams, animals from all over the Ukraine, even in heavy fighting zones like Kharkiv, were and are still being brought out. This is Mira, one of the dogs the GCF rescued from Kharkiv, a city where air raid sirens sound about every half an hour. As you can imagine, animals like her are deeply traumatized by the noise the smell of the explosions, the disappearance of all their routines they've come to know, finding themselves bombed out of their homes, and of course the uncertainty of it all, and no one there to explain it to them. I mean, can anyone really explain war? So the rescuers have to work hard to calm these animals' frayed nerves before loading them into vehicles to take them to freedom. Once animals have crossed the rescue bridge that Peter Germany and its partners created, the GCF provides veterinary care, animal passports, microchips, everything else that's needed so that these animal refugees can either be adopted right there on the spot or moved into approved shelters in other countries. Thanks to your Global Compassion Fund support, the network that began four months ago is growing as the war changes. When teams got word that animals in Odessa had gone without food for three days, I'll let Sylvie Boonts, one of Peter Germany's staffers working in Ukraine, tell you what happened next. At the moment, I think we are the only ones who brought so much animal food into Ukraine because it is so complicated to enter the border to Ukraine. So we have the chance to help. We could already bring 40 tons of food and we will bring food to Odessa. Nobody is bringing hope at the moment to Odessa. They don't have animal food since many days. And we are in contact with the shelter of Odessa. 
and they promised us they will stay with their animals. They will not leave them. And at the moment they have some food for humans, but they don't have anything for the animals. So they share the human food with the cats and the dogs. And they said they will live together or they will die together. So if we don't bring them food, they will all die. We have no time to lose at the moment. You can hear in Sylvie's voice how critical it is to keep those food supply chains active. So far, teams have delivered directly into Ukraine more than 600 tons of food for dogs, cats, horses, and donkeys. And by any means they can. That means using semis, convoys of small rescue vehicles, and even a train, and there's more. Sylvie also leads a team in Romania with a partner organization, Edux Anima, and they helped by sending a team to the Ukrainian-Romanian border. I remember the landmark moment when Peter Germany and its partners had brought out more than 1,300 animals from Ukraine across the Polish border. Our virtual champagne corks were popping, but then something awful happened. Poland decided enough's enough and it began making it far too difficult for animals to cross into their country. So when life gives you lemons, you try to make lemonade. Not that it was easy, but we did. Our team adapted. They shifted our mission to Hungary, where teams are there today working at that border. They're currently remodeling existing buildings so that they can comfortably house up to 300 animals who must wait out their required quarantine periods. And they're making sure to get all the documentation needed to eventually get those animals adopted. Our teams are also building a very basic shelter in Ukraine itself, close to the Hungarian border so that Ukrainians can rest and wait with their animals there too. In 1939, Winston Churchill said, I cannot forecast to you the action of Russia. It's a riddle wrapped inside a mystery inside an enigma. Well, you could say the same in 2022, as no one knows where this hideous war will go or end. All that's clear is that animals in Ukraine will need help for years to come. They can count on the fact that Peter Germany and its partners, supported by the Global Compassion Fund, will be there for them. We are in it for the long haul. That's one reason among many that I would ask that you join in keeping this life-saving work going strong by making a monthly donation to the Global Compassion Fund through peter.org slash GCF. As you know, some rescuers and shelter workers have already died in this war. And it's a frightening fact that determined rescuers like Sylvie do actually risk their lives to reach animals. So while you and I are not required to face the front lines, our support of their life-saving work means that we are there with them in spirit. With that in mind, if you'd like to send a personal message to the members of the rescue teams, please put whatever you'd like to say in the chat box below or just email events at peter.org and we'll make sure that they see it. They love the encouragement and given what they see, they need it. Now let's travel to where the Global Compassion Fund backed Peter Latino team has been hosting spayathons in Mexico. You remember the film, Y tu mama tambien, your mother too? Well, our motto is Los Gatos tambien, the cats too. So we're sterilizing not only street dogs, but lots and lots of gatos as well. Nearly a thousand dogs and cats have been sterilized at our events in the Yucatan in just the last year alone. These clinics are usually held in schools, and they also treat animals for mange, which drives the dogs crazy in hot climates as the itching keeps them up all night. And our vets make them more comfortable by dosing them for internal parasites, ridding them of ear mites, and all sorts of other ailments. And we seize the opportunity to give the children animal care coloring books in Spanish. 
and bend all available adults' ears with tips to make life easier for the animals in their homes. For many families, like those in the Mayan village of Chichimila, where people grow their own food and they make their own tortillas over a wood fire, suggesting that they pay a vet to spay their animals is like suggesting they run out and buy a Lamborghini. But the GCF supporters make it possible for Peter Latino, local shelters, and Mexican officials to come together to provide all those surgeries free. We even throw in free vegan tacos while the villagers sit patiently waiting their animals' turn on the operating tables, up to eight tables at a time. The Peter Latino team have recruited celebrities like Kate Del Castillo, who you may recognize from her ads for us, Dolce Maria, and Sofia Cisniega to generate publicity that brings people and their animals to these events. Sophia stayed all day at one of our clinics dressed as Catwoman, telling starstruck local media, the only way to end this crisis is to make sure that we spay and neuter as many cats as possible. Exactamente, Sophia, CC. And because of the GCF, our teams will be helping do just that. Let's get to a third country before we wrap up. Here's a clue. If the mountain won't come to Mohammed, Mohammed must go to the mountain. So off we go to Jordan. If anyone travels to Jordan, they invariably visit Petra, a UNESCO World Heritage Site that covers some 100 square miles of terrain and lets tourists gaze in wonder at the ruins of an ancient civilization. Prince William and Kate, the Duchess of Cambridge, made that trip there earlier this year. Peter Asia also went to Petra and uncovered what the royal visitors did not see, more than a thousand donkeys being used as living taxis to carry tourists around the site and even up 900 crumbling stone steps. So while we work on that, the GCF helped us set up a free veterinary clinic. And today we provide emergency assistance to dozens of donkeys every day, and to the horses and camels also forced to haul tourists around. It is truly appalling that these animals have never before received even basic care. Today, our ambulance travels into the vast, rocky desert areas and treats them for everything under the burning sun, including colic and heat exhaustion from temperatures that go well into the 90s by early summer, when flies lay their eggs in the animal's very nostrils, which become maggot-filled. Luckily, however, word has spread to neighboring Bedouin villages and caves, and people do bring sick and injured animals to us all the time. Animals are a means to an end to them, discarded when they become ill or injured. The children see the donkeys as things. They have gone so far as to push them off the cliffs there, breaking their legs and their backs just for fun and hitting donkeys is almost a robotic impulse to them. So we are trying to stop that mindset. Many children who work inside Petra leave school to work in the tourism industry. Our vet team and workers help the animals who have been pounded on their heads with rocks, animals who have been deliberately set on fire, stabbed, have had dogs tied to their tails, and ones who've been beaten so badly that they would have died slowly had our staff not found them. I try to remember standing in the desert in Jordan and picking up a handful of sand, adding water to it and seeing it come alive with little flowers, pretty much a miracle. But that moment has been erased by the reality of these animals' lives and deaths. The clinic staff never misses an opportunity to try to build empathy. Recently, some children, bringing a sick donkey to the clinic, spotted another donkey with a wound on his back. Thanks to the lessons in animal emotions and feelings the clinic staff had taught them, 
These children realized that the donkey was in pain. So they went and got him and brought him to us for treatment as well. Staff made sure to praise the children for being compassionate so as to reinforce their kind act. And sweets might have been involved too. We also rescue and retire donkeys, like our dear Buzz, who was so badly tasered that he was covered in burns. Buzz and the rest of our donkey retirees are now happily rolling around in the sand at the stables, safe at last. Our rescued foals will never know the whip or be forced to wear those awful chain bridles that constantly rub against their mouths and chins. Instead, they're learning that some humans can be kind and loving. I'll mention one other thing that we must deal with. When you work in the field, you hear the most ridiculous myths. I remember one man telling me that he fed his dog gunpowder to make him mean. Some people putting motor oil on their dogs to cure them of mange. And a woman who wouldn't take her dog into the house because she thought a dog indoors attracted lightning during storms. Well, our clinic team in Petra has to deal with people using absolutely awful old treatment methods. They recently helped two donkeys whose owners burned them badly with a hot iron, believing that the donkey's pain would cure their lameness. Of course it didn't, and the burns became infected. Our veterinarians treated what had become open, weeping sores and made sure that the animals had pain relief and plenty of rest. The donkey's owners saw this firsthand, knew that actually we do know what we're doing and that they are now coming in for proper treatment, which doesn't cost even one cent, or for them, one Jordanian dinar. As you have heard, the clinic has had a whopping impact so much so that we really must buy a second ambulance for our rescues. Something giving through peter.org slash GCF will make possible. GCF supporters are also helping in other ways. It was after many of you joined our email campaign to mechanize the area that the tourism department finally rolled out 20 eco-friendly vehicles to replace some of the horse carriages. If you haven't yet taken action, please do so because we must push the government to do much, much more. Those e-vehicles are a super first step, but they're nowhere near enough. There are still heavy people sitting on the animals' backs throughout Petra and waiting in the scorching sun in front of buildings like the Treasury. And of course, there are still weary donkeys struck over and over again to make them keep climbing up those steep steps to the monastery, 900 steps with someone on their back many times a day. We've written without any success to UNESCO as the steps are crumbling from this weight, but UNESCO just doesn't seem to care. So that leaves us with finding other solutions. And believe me, we are on the case. Here are some of the donkeys who have to navigate those rocks and carry goods. Let me leave you with a few lines from a poem by Sandy Lynn about donkeys. They are deep in my heart. The ones who are abused, their pain is such a sin. But you and I can change this and give new hope to them. And we will, won't we? Well, that's about it. So thank you for traveling the globe with me and for being a part of this fireside chat. I hope you'll join me for our next set of adventure stories highlighting excellent work that you make possible. This time, we took a quick look at three of our service areas and I hope you'll tune in next time when we'll discuss volcanoes, typhoons, hurricanes, and the Global Compassion Fund supporting work that pulls animals out of such natural disasters and into rescuers' arms. We have a lot of ground to cover, including one of our team's work in Puerto Rico, where some shelters are still recovering from Hurricane Maria. Permit me to leave you with this thought. The Global Compassion Fund is a godsend. 
Helping animals in deep trouble in remote parts of the world is our concern and yours. So together, with teamwork on the ground, that's only possible because of your donations, we will perform near miracles. Thank you. Thank you, Ingrid, that was truly inspiring. And thank you all for joining us. There are so many wonderful programs, everything from spay and neuter work to direct rescue work to humane education all across the globe that are affecting positive change in the lives of animals. And they need your help. Right now, we are offering a monthly giving program for the Global Compassion Fund that we hope that you will join. You can make a monthly gift by filling out the form on peter.org forward slash GCF and checking the monthly box. With your commitment each month, teams can plan and innovate ways to bring much needed relief to animals. And as a thank you for signing up for a monthly donation of $25 or more, Peter will send you a stack of blank cards that feature animals Global Compassion Fund supporters have helped with their donations. Please share this video with those that you know will be inspired at peter.org forward slash GCF, where you can also stay updated on the work being done. Thank you so much for your compassion and your commitment to improving the lives of animals. Bye.